Hi, it's Mike Patey. I've only got a couple hours. It's been a long day at work and the uh, day's almost done. I've had a couple requests, people asking how I make the carbon fiber parts and show them some of the tricks. And uh, I have just a little bit of time before I've got to head home. So I'm gonna try and put together a part real fast, draw it, cut it, shape it, mold it, and even pull some carbon fiber off it, see if I can get it done in an hour. So that's my goal. And uh, what I'm gonna make is a heater box. On the turbine, I could use P3 heat but it comes out so hot that I would need to then run it through an air-to-air -air, uh, intercooler and cool the air down. I'd also have to have a P3 valve. It also robs a little bit of horsepower. And there's a, a few more moving components, a little bit problematic. So on this application, and I'm, whereas I don't need pressurization, I'm not gonna use the P3 heat, and I'm gonna take the oil line prior to going into the oil cooler for the engine, and I'm gonna run it through another oil cooler and do a liquid oil to air heat exchanger to make a heater for the wheel go without robbing any horsepower, doing it with less weight, fewer parts. And to make a heater work like that, you gotta pass it through a couple times, make the air move slow. So I'm gonna make a real quick part and show you how I do it. Hopefully it turns out we only got a little bit of time. So let's see how it goes. That's my mold. Precise measurements. <laughs> it's Bondo, not high salt. Anything close work. I'm about done. You can do it in about five minutes of sanding and a few more minutes. We'll start putting carbon on this and doesn't take much. I'll pour probably 90% of what I poured in here back in here, but this stuff works awesome. So just put it on generous, let it dry a few minutes and do it again. Um, it's going really fast. We actually just sanded this a couple minutes ago, put a couple of coats on it. It's dry, it's ready to go, it's almost dry, but I'm in a hurry. We're gonna put five layers of carbon fiber on it. This is all ready to go, lay over the top, and we're gonna bag it, so back to work. It's on. This is 2K carbon fiber, and uh, this goes fast. All right, I just finished cutting it with my super sharp pizza cutter. I'm gonna take all this excess out of my way. We're gonna use super sophisticated measuring devices. About a one and a half by one and a half. Let's put that down the middle. Now the reason we do this is I made it on the piece of plastic. It's so I can pick it up, I can move it around and it doesn't get all stretched. So now I can just drape it over the part. Well, I don't mean to be that messy, casual, but then you peel the plastic off. Without this plastic, it'd be a nightmare. Throw that in the garbage. And now we can start shaping. Down onto our mold. You gotta kinda learn which way the carbon likes to move and then work it. All right, layer number two. It's about 30, 40 seconds a layer if you keep your pace going. I'm gonna do this one a little different. I'm gonna start with it off. I wanna start on this back side. I cut my seam on this side, which is a hole I'm gonna cut out later. But now I wanna make a little bigger lip here. So I'm gonna start on this side and then stretch the material to go another direction and put the seam on another part of the part. So we just alternate the seams. A few minutes into it and I got four layers down. Last two, five and six. About six layers of 2K carbon fiber and we're gonna be done.
All right, so six layers are down, we went fast. Of course, it's the small, easy part, but this is peel ply, and this is some material that allows us to suck all the resin back out. So this is gonna go on, and what this does is this allows us to put this on top of it and suck the resin through the peel ply and drag all the extra resin back out of the part. Now this doesn't have a lot of movement, so you've got to cut it when you're going around corners and kind of work your way around. So I'm gonna mess with this for a minute. I'll show you what it looks like when we're ready to go down. All right, so I'm almost done. I'm just covering up little spaces where I had to make slits to get this to lay down so that the bleeder ply, this is bleeder ply. You can get it aircraft spruce, but actually, you can get batting from Home Depot for really, really cheap, and it works great. And it works exactly the same. You just need something to suck up the resin, but um, you need to make sure that all these areas, if suction goes on it, it will go all the way down and touch. And I feel really good about that, so I'll put my bleeder ply on. And uh, let's vacuum this down. All right, so the Bleeder ply, I've got two layers, and here I folded it in half and made it into four. This kind of gives me a thicker area that air can pass through when I hook up my vacuum. And then this, I'm gonna just duct tape right to the table, and I'll put up my suction unit right here where I've got four layers of bleeder ply, and now pull down really nice and tight. Now what's really nice about using Lexan, plexiglass, whatever, you can tape right to it, and you don't have to put the vacuum bag all the way around the right. part. So the way vacuum bagging works is this is a vacuum hose. I can take off this end. It's got a rubber seal right here. It's got a hole in the middle. I put this, reach it inside, and line this up, twist it together. Now I've made a seal, but now I got to cut a hole in the bottom right here. So I'll get the hole cut in the bottom and now I'll allow a suction point. and then I'll tape off the last of it. All right, let's suck it down. Put my switch. Now you can see we're sucking all the air out. Now as it does it, I wanna hold the material in nice and tight to the part. Kind of work it in as I go into these tight corners. Just stretch it right while it's vacuuming. All right, so now we check our vacuum gauge. We need to be in the green, which is about 50 of vacuum, and <laughs> we're at 70. So now you can already see, see the resin is starting to come through. This is resin sucking through the peel ply up into my bleeder ply. So that's going to be a really nice tight bag and a really great part. But it's super easy doing it on this plexi. So if you can get a sheet of plexi, do a one-sided bag, you're just taping down the top sheet, it's way easier. Okay, I got <laughs> this. We just taped together some sheets of spare aluminum. Um, I had this so many years, and every now and then I just retape it. It's about due to be welded, but this is just an aluminum box with a space heater on top and this is my mini oven so i've got this one i got a bigger one and sometimes we just use 500 watt halogen heat lamps so if it fits under this box we stick it in here this will be cured up in about an hour and this part will be done but i think we were a little over how long i wanted to go on it i wanted to be from a pencil drawing to the wood cut mold bondo bodywork pipe install and carbon in an hour Took us about an hour and 15 minutes to get it to this point. So uh, now we're gonna go work on something else. One hour later, we'll come back and cut this out, probably sand it and trim it up in 15 minutes. Other than the heating cure time, I'll be in it about an hour and a half all in from uh, concept to ready to install on the airplane. So.
All right, there's a part. Now we gotta get the wood out of it. Sanded, clear coated, punch a hole, put in the aluminum pipe. We'll have this one ready to go in about 10 minutes. One more to go. So this is our high-speed mold, only to be used once or twice. Um, these are our finished parts. Not bad for a couple hours work. They actually go over this oil cooler staggered. The rays in there staggered and I've got baffles in them. I actually am using this oil cooler as a heater. It still has a traditional oil cooler on it, but the air is gonna come in and hit this side. There's a separator. It forces the air to travel through once go across, travel through again, turn, come across, travel through a third time and exit the other side. So that the air is moving through the heater three times and it forces it to get all areas of the oil cooler. This is not how you cool oil, but this is a great way to make cabin heat. So there's, I could have done it using the P3 on the turbine, but then I would have had to do an air to air heat exchanger and a P3 exchange valve, cooled it down, put it into the cabin, put a noise reducer pipeline in it, and it would have added more weight, more costs, and it's more problematic. This, I'm just putting this oil cooler in the first line of the oil cooler that's on the engine, so it's the hottest cooler. If I use it or not, is irrelevant, it will then continue to the traditional oil cooler that cools the engine. So this is additional cooling if I'm using the heater, but if it's not, it just acts like a, a line bypassing to the regular oil cooler. So. Um, there's no moving parts, there's nothing to fail, there's no P3 valve, there's no high pressure, there's no air-to-air -air exchanger. So this is how I made a high-speed, fast, two parts. So I'm excited.